was completely removed. And she wanted a child or children again. And she said, Father, as your servant prays here, send your word to a faraway state in Nigeria and recreate that womb again. Do you know? Immediately. Everybody say immediately. The woman conceived supernaturally. Not just that she conceived, the woman put to bed a bouncy baby child. I spoke with her myself. Tonight is your night. The servant of God that trained every one of us, including all the state overseers in Nigeria and outside, and the northeast with us here, all of them. Right now, I have the honor. I have the honor to welcome Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. Pastor. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Great to be in Taraba again. Something is coming your way. Supernatural miracle. Through Jesus, who reigns over all, he will reign in your life, reign in your family, and reign over every problem that confronts you today in Jesus' name. That miracle is coming your way. What are you? It will get to you there. Father, we thank you today and bless your name. We thank you because of this opening day, first day of supernatural liberation. Lord, we pray that liberation will come to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Here, all over Nigeria, all over Africa, beyond Africa, Europe, America, Asia, everywhere, Lord, I pray you touch everyone supernaturally tonight in Jesus' name. Speak to everyone. And as you receive and believe the word you speak, we pray your mighty miracle will happen in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I'm reading something to you from John chapter 3 from verse 14. John chapter 3 from verse 14. Here are the words of Jesus himself. And he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Then he says in verse 15, That whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have eternal life. We came here tonight to celebrate Christ, to lift up Christ, to show you Christ, for you to embrace, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, so you will not perish. You, I'm talking to you, here tonight, there tonight, anywhere you are, here is the promise of God that you will not perish. Say, I will not perish. And it says, whosoever, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And then it says in verse 16, for God so loved the world, the world of this generation. 
and the world of every generation. For God so loved the world, your own world, yourself in the world, your family, and all around you, and all people that are in your community, and all who are here. God so much loved the world that he gave, is giving already. It's not something uh, he's still proposing, he's still thinking of, he's still planning. He's giving you already that he gave his only begotten son, unique, different, distinct from any other one, greater than angels, greater than all men, the only one that will satisfy the demand of the Father God in heaven for your salvation, for your conversion, for your regeneration, and for the great miracle of everlasting, of eternal life, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to tell you tonight, you will have everlasting life. It's available for the asking. It's available for the receiving from the Lord that you have. Thank God you have. Praise God you have. There is no beating about the bush, about it. There is no go and come. As you are here tonight, eternal life, everlasting life is as near to you as the words of your mouth. The moment you ask, the moment you desire, the moment you say, Lord, here am I. Life will come to you tonight. That's why God has brought you here. That's why God has planned this for you in particular. Life in your soul. Life in your spirit. Life in your body. Life all through your system. That's what you have tonight in Jesus' name. Verse 17. In verse 17 it says... For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world. Have you ever thought about that? If God wanted to condemn, everybody would be condemned. Even those who think they're good, those who think they're religious, and those who think they are better than everybody else. But you know, Christ has come not to condemn. Tonight, as you come to the Lord, as you draw near to the Lord, condemnation is wiped away in your life. And then it says, but, that the world, think about that, everyone in the world, think about that, every soul, every personality, wherever you are, you've been in the dungeon, you've been in the pit, You've been in the well, dirty well of sin. You will think as you are falling into the well, into the pit, you will think, well, if anybody should be condemned, I should be condemned. But God has not sent his only begotten son to condemn you. But that the world through him, everyone, Everyone here, everyone there, everyone everywhere. That everyone in the world through him might be saved. Salvation. Somebody shout salvation. salvation. You have it tonight. As you accept, as you receive, as you believe, it says, whosoever. And that whosoever is you. There's a miracle with your name attached unto it. Nobody will take it from you. Nobody will replace you. There is salvation that is accounted for you, that is provided for you. Nobody will take your salvation. As you come and you say, Lord, here I am. 
immediately God will say, I've been waiting for you. Here is your salvation. Immediately you say, Lord, here I am. He'll say, I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Now, here is your healing. Here is your miracle. I'm talking to somebody there. Let the person I'm talking to shout, Amen. Tonight, very quickly and briefly, I'm speaking to you on looking up in faith to the great liberator. He comes to liberate. He comes to set you free. He comes to save you. He comes to give you eternal life. And he comes to heal you. He comes to deliver you. He comes to give you supernatural, heaven-made salvation, healing, deliverance, liberation in every form. And you look up to him in faith, to that great liberator. Praise the Lord tonight, you are liberated. Three things I'm looking at in the message. Number one, the life of failure in horrible lawlessness. That's where we have been. That's why Christ came. We didn't know how to live, how to talk, how to think, how to behave. We were lawless. The law was there, but we were lawless. It was to be before us and were to live by the law of God and to walk in the straight path. But we were lawless. And because of that, we had a life of failure, a life of defeat, a life of sickness, a life of oppression, a life in captivity, a life in imprisonment, a life in confinement. We were confined. The place we wanted to go, we couldn't get there. The life we wanted to live, we couldn't live that life. And heaven looked at us struggling. Let me say, heaven looked at you struggling. I want to, I want to, I intend to, I plan to, I desire to, but you couldn't fulfill that. Horrible life. Horrible lawlessness. The life of failure. That will change tonight. Power, salvation, forgiveness, freedom, strength, supernatural strength will arrive at your door. And as you open the door, victory will come in. Abundant life will come in. The joy of heaven will come to your life even tonight in Jesus' name. Point number two there is the longing for forgiveness, the longing, the desire. Oh, that I could be free, free from guilt. I'm free from condemnation. I'm free from all the things that bind me. The longing, the desire, the aspiration that I just want to be a complete man, a complete woman, a man, a woman that pleases God and walks step by step with God in the power of the cross of Christ. That longing in your heart, that desire in your heart, that aspiration, I want to be, heaven will come down upon you today. And that longing will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Number three is the look of faith. The look of it, the Lord has made it so simple. You don't have to climb a mountain. You don't have to go to River Jordan. You don't have to go to the Red Sea. You don't have to climb or descend any valley. Just where you are, you look up like this to the Savior who died on the cross. You are free. I am free. I am free. It's happening to you tonight. The look of faith towards the heavenly liberator. Look at number one there. In number one is the life of failure. 
in horrible lawlessness. As I look at the Bible, if there was anyone that shouldn't fail, anyone that shouldn't be defeated, anyone that shouldn't be sick, anyone that shouldn't be under any oppression, it was the children of Israel. But lo and behold, Numbers chapter 21, reading there from verse 4. If they failed with all the possibilities before them, everybody else will fail. If they failed with all the privileges they had, every other person on earth in any generation not having not taking, not embracing, not receiving, all the privileges they had will fail. They'll fail publicly. They'll fail privately. They'll fail professionally. They'll fail as parents. They'll fail as prodigals. They'll fail as people on earth without Christ, without divine help, without heavenly power, without the heavenly liberator, I don't care where you are coming from, where you are living, without the supernatural liberation coming from the Lord, failure in horrible lawlessness will be that person's loss. But thank God today, the story of your life will change. Yeah. All those tears will be wiped away. Yeah. And the inner weakness, lifelessness within you, everything will vanish away tonight. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Yeah. I thank God you are here. Something supernatural will happen to you. Before then, point number one, the life of failure in horrible lawlessness. Look at Numbers, if you have your Bible. If you don't, I'll read it to you. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Have you ever been discouraged? The soul of the people was discouraged because of the way. The way of life. The way into life. The way of freedom. The way into freedom. The way to the promised land. The way to the final destination for them they had questions they couldn't answer. They had desires that were not fulfilled. They had difficulties that were not resolved. They had sicknesses that were not healed. And they were just fed up. And it says, because of the way, they were much discouraged. Unique will that man be. Different will that man be who gets discouraged and he doesn't say something lawless, something foolish, something punishable with a smile. What about our lives? In our lives, because that happened, I didn't understand. Then we said something we shouldn't have said. Then we did something we shouldn't have done. Then we lived in a way we shouldn't have lived. I'm discouraged. There's no point living a good life. There's no point saying the right thing. There is no point being affectionate. There is no point loving anybody. And then our lives went upside down. Lawlessness came into their lives. They acted and they lived as if no rule, no regulation. And there's no law, and they just forgot about the law of God. That's our picture, our picture. That's the picture of the whole of humanity. 
Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, And the people speak against God. They were discouraged. And the people speak against God. The law is, you will love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, every time, every moment, no break, no interruption. You love the Lord uniformly. But now, they didn't love the Lord. They broke the number one law. What's the first law in the commandments of God? The love you have to God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all your strength that you might live. But now, they broke that law. If you break a great law, then you have committed a great sin. If you break the greatest law, then you have committed the greatest sin. Now, they broke the greatest law. To love the Lord, their God, with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, with all their strength. They speak against God and against Moses. The second law of God is like unto this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Moses was a great neighbor. He was the one that brought them out of the captivity of Egypt. Great friend, great helper. He was the one that struck the rock and water came out for them to drink. Great helper, great provider. He was the one that stretched out the rod and river, the Red Sea uh, parted and they went on that dry ground. Great helper, great friend, great benefactor. He's the one that stretched the rod back again and the river Red Sea closed on Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Great, great helper. They spoke against God. They broke the greatest commandment, law of love. And then against Moses, the nearest, the most helpful neighbor. Wherefore, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread. That's a lie. They were already eating manna, the bread of heaven and the food of angels. When people are discouraged, they tell lies, they forget the goodness of God, they forget the goodness of their neighbors. We've all been there, we've all been there. And that's why we've lost many friends. That's why we've suffered more than necessary. And it says, it says, and our soul loathed this light bread. I thought you said there was no bread, but they said now, this light bread. Look at the consequence in verse 6. In verse 6, it tells us, and the Lord sent serpents among the people. What does that mean? The serpents had been there all the time. But because the Lord was with them, and the Lord above them, over them, the, the Lord around them, the Lord before them, the Lord behind them, the serpents could not get to them. And now, with what they have done, they say, God, we don't like you. We don't love you. We hate you. And see what you have done. We have discovered. So God said, okay, you don't want me. He's not going to impose himself on anyone. He led them from the shield above. He led them from the shelter and all from the fence around before them as their guard and as the one that goes before them to win the victory for them he led and behind them he led and the serpents had chance and they came in they've been wanting to destroy for a long time it says the serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of Israel died many of us have been like that because the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the sinner is hard. The way of the lawless is hard. But thank God, 
the Lord will not leave you in that condition. He'll come and save you. He'll come and heal you. He'll come and deliver you. The Lord allowed that to see if they will quickly turn around and come to him and say, Lord, I am sorry. That's all he's waiting for. Lord, I am sorry. And that's exactly what they did. And when you do that, and you come to God tonight, and you say, Lord, I'm sorry, every problem, every suffering, all the heartache, all the sin problem, all the oppression, everything will be over. He'll conquer that serpent for you. He'll conquer that Satan for you. He'll conquer that sin for you. He will set you free tonight in Jesus' name. It will not be long. A few minutes from now, eternal life will come. Forgiveness will come. Where is it coming? Where? Where? Coming to you then. Point number two now. Point number two. They are longing for forgiveness with honest lowliness. They are longing for forgiveness with honest lowliness. Look at Numbers chapter 21, verse 7. It says in verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses. You know, there are people who are proud and haughty. Yes, we spoke against Moses, and we know the consequence. I'm ashamed of what I've done. I'm sorry for what I've done, but I will not go to Moses, the representative of God, to pray unto God. That one is pride. And those who are proud, and they will not come to the Savior, they are proud. They will not come to the Redeemer. They are proud. They will not come to the one, the liberator. They will remain in their problem for a long time. I will not remain in my problem. I will not remain. Say it for yourself. You will not remain in your problem in Jesus' name. Lowliness, lowliness. They came. Nobody pressurizing them. Nobody pushing them. Nobody knocked them. Nobody cursed them and said, you have not seen anything yet. If you don't come now, see what will happen. No, of their own volition, their own accord. They said, we knew the way we went to get the suffering on us. And the way back is the way you went down. If you went to a place of lawlessness, you knew the road you took, and you knew what you said, that same road will lead you back. You know what you spoke against God. That's the way that led you down. Turn around, that same way will lead you back. And so, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, with their mouth, they brought trouble on themselves. The way back is to use that same mouth and to bring forgiveness, and to bring freedom, and to bring healing, and to bring deliverance. The same mouth that sinned is the same mouth that will confess. The same mouth that insulted God, blasphemed God, is the same mouth that will repent and say, I was foolish. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. Everybody knows the way back home. You remember the prodigal son? He led the father and he went a particular way into the far country. There's no point saying, I want to go back home, but I don't know the way. I want to go back to my father, but I don't know the way. I want to go back to the fellowship and the freedom and the forgiveness and the fruitfulness of a happy home. But I don't know the way back. You know the way back, that same way you took. When you went to the prodigal's far country, 
that same road is the road you take and you say, Lord, I'm sorry, I come back. I'm not worthy. I'm not coming because I think this is my marriage. All I'm asking for is mercy. You'll have mercy tonight. The mercy that will receive you back home that will receive you back into the protection of the Lord, into the salvation of the Lord, is coming to you tonight. And so, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. Beautiful, beautiful. The same thing, that's all it takes for you to come back to God. It's very simple. Some people think that getting saved is complicated. No, very simple. Some people think uh, getting forgiveness and freedom and the fellowship of the Father as I come back home, they think it's complicated. No, all it takes is for you from the depth of your heart to come to the Lord and to say, I have sinned. There's no big vocabulary there you cannot pronounce. We don't need to go to a dictionary or go to a encyclopedia and look for the words I'm going to use when I pray for forgiveness, for salvation, for eternal life. Very simple. We have sinned. And then they now explain that little sentence, for we have spoken against the Lord. And against thee, then they made a request. This was their longing. Their longing. They said, pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. They knew that God has authority over the serpents, over Satan, over sickness, over sin. He has authority over any trouble or the source of that trouble in your life. And they said, pray unto the Lord. They knew there was only one person to pray to that would give them that forgiveness and freedom and deliverance unto the Lord. Tonight, I so come to the Lord because I know you are coming. I said, I know you are coming. The Lord has seen your heart. He sees your longing. He knows you want forgiveness. He knows you want freedom. And as you come tonight, he will forgive you. He will take away your sin. He will cancel all the consequences of sin out of your life in Jesus' name. And then we're told when uh, they said, you pray to the Lord because he is the only one, only one. They were not thinking, tell Aaron, Aaron cannot do this. Tell Joshua, Joshua cannot do this. Tell the elders in Israel, elders, they, do, they cannot give salvation. They can lead us to Christ. They can lead us to the source of salvation. They can lead us to the one who has come to set us free. But they... Any leader in the church, any elder in the church, any founder of a church, anyone, please, cannot give us that salvation. But the Lord can give us that salvation. Even Moses could not give them that deliverance. Moses still has to talk to God. God is waiting for you. And tonight, he will forgive you. He will turn your life around. It will dry and wipe away your tears in Jesus' name. It will make all things new in your life. Condemnation will vanish away. Depression will vanish away. Sorrow will vanish away. Sickness will vanish away. Tonight it will happen. Where are you there? It's coming your way. Tonight is the night of good news for you in Jesus' name. And Moses prayed for the people. Moses prayed for the people. Now, Moses knew that all he needed to do 
was to look up to God on their behalf. And what they were asking for, the Lord will give them. I didn't hear your amen there. Yeah. Now, you remember? All that Moses ever did was a great miracle. Yes, but how? There was a rod in his sand. And God said, throw the rod down. That's all. And he threw it down. Became a serpent. So that Pharaoh can be convicted. And God said, pick it up again. Very simple. He picked it up and became rod again. Then they were going. Look at the Red Sea. Large ocean. Sea. The Red Sea. And God said, what's that in your hand? Stretch it out. It's as simple as that. We do what God says we should do. We pray because he says we should pray. And he will do the rest. I said he will do the rest. Tonight, I'll pray with you. I'll pray for you. And God will do the rest. If you're sick tonight, all I will do, I don't have to jump. I don't have to roll on the ground. Very simple. I'll pray unto God on your behalf. Your cancer will vanish away. Your blind eyes will open. As we pray tonight, a change will take place in your life. I remember I was in Bauchi State just a few years ago. There's a 20 year old woman walking the streets, picking up. All those uh, dirty, dirty things, she was mad, insane. She didn't know what she was doing. And then uh, I gave the message, like I'm giving the message to you now. And what happened at that time uh, will happen to everyone. And I said, Lord, heal everyone, touch everyone. Those who are mad, have a mental problem, take it away. And immediately after the final amen, all the devils left that woman. Totally free. Delivered and set free. And then she began to wonder, who put all these dirty things that she had raged all around? Who put them on me? And she became a real dignified lady. All things that the devil had put in your life, tonight is your night of freedom. He will set you free in Jesus' name. And so Moses prayed for them. You know, all it takes to come to God and then you confess your sin, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord will set you free. You'll have the joy of forgiveness and the joy of salvation in your heart tonight in Jesus' name. You know what the Lord has said in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. It says, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Now, how foolish we are to try to cover anything from God. Before you committed that sin or those sins, God saw. When you opened your mouth and you said what you shouldn't have said, God heard. After the Lord had seen everything, you are trying to cover. He can see through the cover. He sees in the day. He sees in the night. It's foolish to try to cover anything from God. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them. Whoso, whoso, that is you, whosoever. Whoso confesseth. That thing that is churning in your mind, troubling your heart, convicting you in your soul, in your, and you remember very clearly, how did I do that? Why did I do that? Who is looking at me now? What record does God have now? Who you confess and you forsake shall have mercy. 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 
For who? Where are you? Mercy is coming your way. The Lord will forgive you. The Lord will set you free. Now, look at point number three now. Point number three, the look of faith towards the heavenly liberator. And so here is what God told Moses. Numbers chapter 21, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fair serpent. And Moses never questioned God. When he said, stretch your rod, he never questioned God. Throw your rod down, never questioned God. Speak my word, never questioned God. When the preacher does what God wants him to do, not questioning God, speak the word only. When I speak the word, as he has said, you will do the rest in your life. That man is too weak. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. And it will happen tonight that everyone, how many people? Everyone, tell me out aloud. Everyone, look at how good God is. God didn't say, you are the originator of the trouble. There is no forgiveness. Everyone. God didn't say, you are the one that broadcast all the nonsense that the people were saying. Uh, everyone. God did not say, you are the ringleader. Everyone. Ringleader. Source. Originator of trouble perpetrator of trouble, the one that has spread all the trouble, forgiveness has come for everyone. The young and the old, the men and the women, forgiveness has come for everyone. That everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. When he looketh upon it, shall live. Life has come. Eternal life has come. Supernatural life has come. Abundant life has come. That everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass. Say that with me. And it came to pass. Say that aloud. And it came to pass. God said it shall come to pass. And now in reality it came to pass. It shall come to pass. There will be salvation for you tonight. It shall come to pass. There is eternal life for you tonight. It shall, it shall come to pass. There's forgiveness from every sin for you tonight. There is freedom for you tonight. There's deliverance for you tonight. There is healing for you tonight. God said, it shall come to pass. And now it came to pass. That if a serpent had beaten any man, any man that's the old servant there, when he beheld, when he looked on the serpent of brass, he lived. He lived. He lived. You will live. Brother, you will live. Sister, you will live. The condemnation of Satan will go away. The oppression of Satan will go away. All the evil things Satan has thought will happen to you. He will die. He will go to hell. God says no. He will leave. He will go to heaven. Satan says he has incurable disease. He will soon give up the ghost. He will perish. God says no. He has 
a disease, but I'm going to heal him tonight. I'm going to heal her tonight, and then he will live the rest of his life in the joy of the Lord. You will live the rest of your life in the healing of the Lord. In the deliverance of the Lord. In the abundant life of the Lord. Because of the mercy of God. What are you? You receive that mercy now. The Lord is ready to forgive every sin you ever committed. He'll give you forgiveness. He'll give you salvation. Because Christ is the Savior, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be saved. And then, if you are sick, I rejoice with you, tonight is the night of your healing. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so shall the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus, be lifted up, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. For God so loved the world and so loved you in the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, will not perish, will not perish, but have everlasting life. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to forgive you every sin you ever committed in your life. He wants to bring you freedom and he wants to give you total liberation for your spirit, for your soul. Wherever you are, you want that forgiveness, that eternal life, that salvation. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand and say, Lord, I'm here. I'm longing. I'm desirous. I want that forgiveness. I want that salvation. Raise up that hand. As you are raising up the hand, just stand up wherever you are. You are indicating to the Lord in lowliness of mind and humility, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. God bless you there. God bless you there. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Tonight, I want to settle this problem of guilt, of condemnation, and I want you to take away all the guilt and condemnation of my sin and set me free now. The way up is the way you took down. You come up now with the same words like they said, Lord, I have sinned. Tell the Lord, I'm sorry. For the sins I committed, I'm sorry. For the horrible lawlessness in my life, Lord, I'm sorry. I will not cover my sin. I expose everything to you. And I ask now, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary to take away the guilt and the condemnation of my sin. Thank you, Lord. He will never reject anyone who comes sincerely. He accepts you. He receives you. Say, Lord, I thank you. I believe I'm forgiven. He'll give you peace of mind. He'll give you joy of salvation. He'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray with you now. Raise up that hand again now while you are standing up, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are loving God, a merciful Father. You said you will show mercy to everyone. And whosoever comes to you, you will not reject, you will not cast away. Lord, all these who have come, one and all, without exception, Forgive everyone in Jesus' name. Wipe away the remembrance of their sin. Lord, I pray you give them the freedom that they not go back into those sins anymore in Jesus' name. Let the grace of God flow into their lives and real salvation from you 
flow into their lives. Grant them the peace and the joy that comes with salvation. Confirm it, O Lord, in every heart, every life right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, it is done. Your sins are forgiven. Say, my sins are forgiven. You have salvation. Say, I have salvation. Confirmed in Jesus' name. We call on our state pastor now to lead us as uh, you know, we go through this counseling period. As we are standing, keep on standing. Our counselors will get to you there. After we finish this session, I come to pray for you and the Lord will heal you. Please, as you are standing.